up everyone welcome back to for more exos heroes content in today's video we are going to discuss the three game changing mechanics in update 2.0 as you all know um, there are a lot of changes that were dropped during the update but we'll pick the most game changing that will help you improve your progress and improve your team in exos heroes but before that if you want to see more exos here content please be sure to subscribe down below to start off, we will start with Awakening Hero. So for Awakening Hero, you will be required to level up your Fated Equipment, all 6 of them, including your weapon, to level 60. Um, this has been pretty much criticized to be a very hard upgrade to do. Because number one, you will be consuming all of your weapons, I'm oh sorry, all of your equipment and your weapon and uh, as players we have been investing a lot on, on on these to level up our character and for this one you will be forced to consume them okay um equipment and weapon that were special forged polished and magic enhanced except for weapon awakening they will be given gold or of mana and equipment so um, for more on these, please check out the patch on the official Facebook page of, uh, of Exos Heroes. If you, can, if you can forgo that for a bit, the negative side of consuming your equipment. Um, as you can see, there are benefits to this one. And the effects uh, for Awakening are permanent. Okay, so if you can see here, um, in our Awaken bonus effect, uh, let, let's go back first for Frankie. So Frankie has already a six Guardian Stones um, with the same color, which is blue or frost. So if we go back, he already has a defense uh, effect of plus 700 just in case I awaken him. So that's a permanent effect that can no longer be removed. And also for Awaken level one, you will have an increase in combat power, attack, defense, and HP. And if you take a take a look at, at the attack, the combat power, the defense, these are significant increases. They're they're not they're not just small increases. Like for example, if you take a look at your attack, it's a multiplier of three, so times three. Your defense increases by probably times two or double. And your HP increases nearly 1,500 HP and your combat power increases as well so for me this is this is also a plus to awakening your hero I know it's really hard to find faded equipment and to and to level them up and to enhance them and to and to put the other enhancements the polishing the special forging but I would say it's a little bit it's a little bit uh, um, it uh, what do you call this it's worth it by a little bit just a little bit because number one as long as if you're careful enough not to not to level this up your your your, your equipment beyond level 60 your faded equipment beyond level 60 i don't think it would be a problem like for example for frankie here uh the what i have right now is i have only one uh faded which is level 58 so when it reaches level 60 i can now do the awakening provided that i have uh, holy holy water of the universe but if you have a similar problem like i have I have already enhanced, polished my equipment, and uh, had special forging. That is why they're, they're already uh, glittering white. I would suggest that you don't do this. You, you equip them out and replace them with level 60 faded. So because the minimum for this one is only level 60 faded. You don't have to, you're not required to polish anything or, or do anything more than that. Uh, if you did something or did more than that, again um, items will be returned to you but 
I would suggest you you re-equip your characters if you already went above uh, leveling up uh, 60 for fated weapons. So, and the plus side to this, once you've awakened your hero, you can re-equip them again. So more, more stat increases uh, will be given. So I don't think this is really bad. It, it, it's just a bit of a struggle. I know. I feel for, for some of the players there who've, who've, uh, who've farmed so hard for their equipment and their weapons, and yet have them be consumed. But again, um, I like this because of the amount of increase that it gives your characters. If it's just a minimal increase, I won't even recommend this. But if you can see the increase here, it's very significant, uh, and it will help you. It will help you um, really improve your progression in your PvP, in your Chapter 11, or in the Path of Trials. It's a must. It would really be a big help for you. Uh, it will be a grind. Um, especially for players who ha don't have a lot of fated 60 level equipment or weapon it would really take time um, but but the, 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 the upside is is way is way is I think above more a little bit than the downside so I would like you to consider this as one that you should build on I know this is difficult I know this is this would take time but I would suggest you prioritize um, you prioritize your PvP team and your PvP tag teams so those are the 15 players or 15 or 15 heroes that that I think you should prioritize awakening your heroes with all right guys moving on the next would be our elemental damage. So if you've if you've if you've read the patch notes for for Exos here, uh, update 2.0, there's a portion there for elemental damage effect. So you can you can view it here in the battle guide. So here, elemental damage. So your elemental damage is um, gives you elemental advantages over over your competing elements so that's it um, sad to say that it only must be obtained through the signature force so I'll, I'll cover signature force later uh, after this one but the advantages of your elemental damage effects it applies only to single and multiple targets spells that consumes mana and does not apply to damage over time effects okay not applicable to your passive skills okay so again this is a way of enhancing your damage especially if you are, have a hard time clearing stages so you'll have the upper hand here in clearing your chapters and pvp might be easier because there might be a shift uh, in terms of teams and team building because you might you know find a way on how to counter the existing pvp teams the downside the only downside of this one again um, if i may say is your signature force so let 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 us see it, uh, here this is already open because I was able to to meet one of the conditions but I think it needs another another Frankie I need to summon another copy of Frankie for this to be open that is what I think I'm not sure yet um, because it, it says here in the needed material you need one more hero but in the conditions I already met it if you can, if you have seen my, my Shufraken earlier uh, he's already at plus one for the transcendence. So this we have to we have to take a take a closer look first because um, if this one would be hard, 
harder to accomplish, your elemental damage will also be affected. But I'm keeping an optimistic mind that once I get another Shufraken and try to unlock this one, I probably could have an advantage already. If you guys agree with me with Awakening Heroes and Elemental Damage Effects, please comment below and we move to the last part of our game changing mechanics. So the last thing that we'll be discussing is your mana supply change. Okay, here we are. So for mana supply change, so this is it. It's under your special passive. So upon entering five star, one mana is generated for heroes on the same row once every round at the start of own turn. So for sup for attack and chaos, you can still generate mana through your basic attack. While for your defender and for your support players, you can still generate mana while um, being attacked. So the only thing that, that, that changed before, uh, you generate mana based on what element that you have. But now, you generate mana based on how many heroes that are there in a single formation. Let's, let's take a look at the formations, for example. Um, okay, so for example, you have a formation which is emphasized back row. So if I add Rera there, so the difference between the front row is uh, the front row would only be getting one mana every round. Unlike, for example, the back row, for each for each turn that that every hero gets, everyone gets one mana. So, for example, um, for example, uh, Tantalo uh, takes his turn. The others also gain mana. So it rotates on depending on how how fast is their attack speed. So so on and so forth. So again. If you complete the rotation of all all the players at the back, uh, all all heroes will be getting at least four mana, while the front will only be getting one mana. The gameplay right now will depend on your formation and how your heroes synergize with each other. Heroes that will play a big part or would change the game uh, are would would be your mana producers for example my top three would be pan dorka and iris so they would they would really give a big enhancement to your to your team in terms of mana production so i don't see i don't see an overall negative side to this one i think it balances out each element and provides um, other heroes to shine here i think the update 2.0 was a very big change for everybody it's it was too much to you know too much to digest too many changes to have in one update but eventually i had to look at the patch in a way that um, how does it really benefit all of the players do they does it benefit the players short term or in the long term does it promote creativeness in the game yes because people will have to think more and probably do a lot of team building in order to have a new group in pvp meta to have a new you know new hero shine with the new with the new mana supply change this encourages creativity that is why i like the update it's up to you on how to learn how to mix and match your heroes mix and match your strategies and mix and match your synergy well guys it's been a long day and that concludes this video again let me know what you think in the comments below your thoughts your objections your agreements please let me know again you all stay safe and see you guys in the next video warden out